All right, so obviously to become a better musician, you need to practice, but do you need to have a practice routine? Today, we're gonna to talk about five topics or categories that I think every jazz musician should be consistently practicing. And we're gonna talk about some tips on how to go about practicing those topics. But first, do we actually need to practice through a daily routine? So real quick before we jump into it, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Though I miss touring very much, it's been really great to be able to make more content for you guys. And it really means a lot to me that you're all watching. So I hope you'll subscribe to stay tuned for whenever I release new content. So over the years, I've been fortunate enough to do master classes worldwide, and I've found that wherever I go, it doesn't matter if it's an Ivy League school, a premier conservatory, or a small town on the outskirts of Russia, the question that comes up every time is what is your practice routine? And so people are typically surprised when I say something to the effect of, well, I really don't have a practice routine. And in my opinion, I don't think that you need one. I would actually even go as far as saying, and of course this is just my opinion, but I think that a practice routine can potentially be detrimental. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, what I find typically happens with developing players is that you'll typically get stuck on something that you feel like you can't perfect. You know it's something that you need to be able to do though. So you put it into your practice routine and every time you play, you try to get better at it. Alas, you're not really making much progress, but you keep trying and eventually it just sort of takes the fun out of practicing. So then you kind of switch topics feeling defeated, you noodle around on some material that's more familiar for you, and you end up putting the horn down and just kind of feeling uninspired. Now the reality is though, if you're at a dead end with whatever you're practicing, you should probably start practicing something else. It's important to always make small improvements every day that you practice. So if you're stuck, on a dead end project, you're not gonna get anywhere. You're probably gonna end up feeling discouraged and then you might just stop practicing for a while. A lot of people end up falling into this cycle and I think the reason why we get stuck practicing the same thing is that we get fooled by a common misconception. A lot of people are fooled into thinking that world-class musicians sit in a practice room all day practicing the same material and same exercises tirelessly for decades on end. There's this idea that if you're gonna be a master musician, you need to practice the same thing over and over again for your whole life. And the reality is that's not really true. For instance, although I do certainly come back to topics quite frequently, I'm never practicing the same content for more than a few weeks at a time. There is of course the exception of sound production, Obviously, you do want to be practicing your tone or your sound production on whatever instrument you play, and oftentimes having a brief routine or a brief warm-up routine for sound production can be really beneficial, and I know especially on brass instruments that's the case. However, even with sound production, there are many different ways that you can be practicing developing your tone and sound production. So even within that category, there's a lot of different stuff that you can be cycling through to keep your brain engaged and keep on having fun with the material that you're working on. And then when it comes to all the other elements of musicianship, of course, there's just a plethora of content that you can be working on. So you should really make sure that you're spending your time on a variety of material. So that kind of brings us to why I don't think that you should necessarily practice with a strict practice routine. If you're practicing literally the same material for months or even years on end, you're going to end up in the scope of a year maybe practicing this much content. Whereas I'm always cycling through different materials. So by always adjusting the things that I essentially assign to myself each month, over the course of a year, I end up getting to this much content that I end up practicing. And more importantly, my brain is always going to stay engaged because every time I pick up the horn, I'm gonna feel fresh and excited about the material that I'm working on. So everything that I'm practicing at any given time is always fresh and new to me. Or maybe it's just something that I haven't practiced in a while and I'm coming back to, and then I'm really absorbing it in a whole new way because I'm returning to that concept and growing with it yet again. So this brings up organization because obviously we do need to stay organized in our practice. And even though I don't have a strict practice routine per se, 
I'm extremely organized about what I'm working on every month. So what I always do is I set monthly goals, which gives me the flexibility to practice a variety of things on any given day in a practice session. So if I wanna get four things down in a month, I know that anytime I pick up my horn, I can practice any of those four things. My goal is always to just improve a little bit each day. So if I work a bit on any of those four things, I know that I'm gonna be making a lot of progress towards my monthly goal. But with that in mind, I don't need to practice every single one of those things every single day. And on the other hand, I don't need to stay on just one thing in a given practice session. If I get bored of one topic and I'm losing my focus, I've got three other topics that I can bounce over to and then I can switch gears so I'll stay engaged and still feel fresh and excited about what I'm working on. Okay, so if we don't need to practice the same exact thing every day and we don't wanna corner ourselves into a routine, then what should we do? What should our system be? Some of you watching here, I'm sure are already members of my text lessons subscription program. So any of you already know what I do with the musicians in that program, and it's the same thing that I do with myself in my own practicing. And so what I do is I give each member a set of monthly assignments, plus a practice plan for how much time I think they should spend on each topic throughout the week, depending on their ability and how difficult the topic or assignment is. So by giving them a suggested guideline of what they should get done throughout the week, there isn't that same pressure to every day practice in a very specific type of way. That way you have freedom and flexibility in how you move through the assignments. So each month there are anywhere from three to five broad topics that we're working on. And those three to five broad topics stay pretty much the same, but we're always practicing those broad topics in very different ways from month to month. So I'm always assigning different specific assignments to practice those broad topics. So that way we're always progressing every element of the member's musicianship and we're always staying engaged by always rotating and cycling through different specific material. So let's go over what those broad topics are because these are really important categories to keep in mind. I'm always practicing within these categories and I think it's really important to use this as a guide month to month when you're coming up with your own assignments for yourself. Keep in mind, if you ever wanna join this text lesson subscription program, Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's at capacity because we're full, but I would love to work with any of you over there. So make sure to check that out. So see if there is an opening in the studio and would love to work with you over there if you're interested. So the first topic is tunes and chord changes. One of the best ways to get better at playing through chord changes and just standard song forms in general is to practice a variety of tune learning exercises. One great exercise that I've done with a bunch of members of the Text Lesson Studio is an exercise where you play the same rhythm consecutively, but you change the notes and the melodic contour every time you play that rhythm to match up with the chord changes of the standard that you're playing. So an example of that exercise would sound like this. There's so many different ways to practice songs and practice playing through chord changes. So that's one of the reasons why when people ask me out of all of the eBooks that I've published, which one do I recommend starting with? I usually encourage people to download the full standards mastery combo package on jazz lesson videos because that has a full masterclass that I did on practicing standards. Plus it has six different eBooks with everything from exercises on tunes to harmonic analysis so you can understand the chords better. And there are even solo etudes using specific concepts over song forms. So the second broad topic that I always assign to myself and to the members of the Text Lesson Studio program is the idea of technique 
but technical exercises that are actually practical. So what I mean by that is that we should be actually practicing technical exercises that will make us better at improvising and technical exercises that will actually help us play better phrases when we're improvising. So many people just get stuck playing full range scale exercises or chromatic scales for years and years when there are really so many different ways that you can practice technique in ways that will be much more beneficial for your improvising. So first, there's way more ways to practice technique than just scales. But even within scales, you should be practicing scales by using shapes that are practical for your improvisation. Take this exercise, for example, where you play a narrow scale shape that you can apply to each degree of the scale. It sounds really cool to build this shape up throughout the range of your instrument. So that will end up sounding like this. This scale shape is really practical because this type of melodic contour ties in a lot more to the way that you would actually be constructing lines over the chord changes that you're playing on. But beyond scales, we wanna practice all sorts of other concepts that are really gonna help us with our improvising. One of my favorite modern approaches to technique is the concept of melodic cells. With melodic cells, you'll actually take four note shapes and create exercises and phrases built off of these shapes. I have other videos on this concept if you wanna check that out, but this is something I work on a lot with the Text Lesson studio members because it's so great for technique building and for playing cool modern shapes. So here's an example of a compound melodic cell using two four note shapes put together going up and down in half steps. <laughs> All right, so number three is transcription. Transcribing is really important and so many people shy away from it because they think if they can't transcribe it themselves, they're not really gonna get much benefit out of that. So they just shy away from the project altogether and never really end up transcribing that much. And it's actually not true that you have to transcribe it yourself, especially when you're first developing the ability to transcribe. If you can't transcribe a Charlie Parker solo right off the bat, for instance, you should actually read it first just to start getting some of the language internalized. Then from there, memorize some of the phrases. You'll find that the more you put to memory, the more you'll develop your ears and understanding of the language, and the more you'll be able to start being able to transcribe the material yourself. For the transcription assignments that I give to the text lesson studio members, a lot of times I'm giving them transcription assignments where I also give them a transcription of the solo. Then I encourage them to memorize the solo from there. And a lot of times we just focus on really nice one chorus solos so we can get into the process of transcription much more comfortably. My feeling is the faster you can get to the point of memorizing content from a transcription, the more efficiently you'll benefit from the whole process. Eventually, you won't need the transcription written down for you at all. For instance, after years of learning a bunch of solo transcriptions, I can now pretty much transcribe a saxophonist by ear instantly. But it took memorizing a lot of written transcriptions first to internalize enough language and develop my ears enough that I could really just hear the language and know what they were playing right away. It's very important not to shy away from transcription because you feel overwhelmed. It's one of those things where you just gotta take it bit by bit and you'll really benefit from the process. One of the ways that I became a pretty advanced player as a young kid was that I started memorizing solos by saxophonists like Charlie Parker, Dexter Gordon, Sonny Rollins, and Hank Mobley. But when I was first learning these solos, I was memorizing them, but through written transcription. And then eventually I just started learning whatever solos I wanted because I didn't even need to write them down. I would just hear them and then work on the memorization element. But in an instant, I would be able to know what the saxophonist played. Written transcriptions also give you a visual element that helps you see how what they're playing lines up with the chord changes that they're playing through. And so that actually brings up an important step that I always remind people to do, 
it's very important to memorize or at least learn the chord changes of the song that you're transcribing a solo from before and as you're learning the solo transcription. If you learn the chord changes to the song first, then learning the transcription will be so much more beneficial to your playing because then you'll understand the true harmonic nature of what the soloist was playing. All right, so number four, as far as these broad categories is transposition. I've said this before in my videos, but transposition is like the magic element that you can practice in order to make you progress at a rapid fire rate. As soon as you start memorizing phrases in all 12 keys, you will start to reap the benefits. There's a reason why all the phrase-based eBooks I release have each phrase in all 12 keys. It's hugely beneficial to memorize content in all 12 keys because it deepens your understanding of the language. It expands your vocabulary exponentially and it helps you understand the material in a way where you can really use it for your own improvising and not just plug in the lick verbatim. Most importantly though, it actually improves what I find is the most neglected element of musicianship by developing players, that is your ears, which brings us to number five. All right, so number five is ear training. Typically when a musician seems really talented, it just comes from the fact that they have really strong ears. And a lot of people don't realize that you can really develop your ears just like any other element of musicianship. When I was a kid, I had some trouble learning chord changes by ear and just hearing the chord changes. And now I'm at the point where I can literally memorize a set of chord changes instantly. And so what I mean by that is I can just listen down to a chorus of standard changes and instantly I will know what all the chords are as they're happening. So usually I can actually have the whole set of chord changes memorized after just hearing one chorus or maybe a couple times through. But again, I had to practice in order to get to this point. This wasn't just a natural talent that I was born with. So there are a lot of different ways you can practice ear training and it's something that I'm doing more and more with the members of the Text Lessons Studio program. But today let's just check out one cool exercise real quick for pitch identification. So with this exercise, you can record yourself playing a major seven chord on piano or keyboard with the sustain pedal. Then you can play notes throughout the major scale in that key. So if you play C major seven, play random notes throughout the C major scale. Then come back to that recording the next day and try to play each note back as it's played. An example of this exercise would sound like this. All right, so remember, this is all great stuff to practice, and it's definitely stuff that you want to keep in mind every month while you're practicing, but you don't necessarily need to have a daily routine where you practice the same material every day for months or even years on end. Try to just keep these broad categories in mind and give yourself monthly assignments and a plan for how you're going to practice this stuff throughout the month. It doesn't need to be that you hit every single topic every single day. And it doesn't need to be that you spend all day on one topic. You can feel free and flexible to move around the material the way that you want to. The important thing is just don't get stuck on the same material and then go months or even years where you're just working on the same thing because you haven't perfected it yet. It's gonna benefit you a lot more to just come up with a set of monthly assignments and always be changing and swapping out exactly the specifics that you're working on. If you wanna try out the Text Lesson Studio membership program, we're actually about to close off the studio since it's approaching capacity yet again. But if you do wanna try it out now, we're actually offering a free seven day trial where you can try out the studio for free. And in that studio, I do actually give every member monthly assignments according to their progress. So essentially when you enter the studio, you'll send me a really short video of yourself playing and don't be shy about your level of ability because we've got everyone from beginners to high level professionals in the studio. And so then after I check out your video, I'll send you a first set of assignments and practice plan for the month and we'll be off to the races. Then you get to communicate with me anytime you want throughout each month via text or email. And you also get to attend my monthly studio hangs on Zoom where I demonstrate all sorts of practice techniques, bring people up to volunteer, and I take questions from all the studio members live. So it's a really great program. I hope you'll check it out and give it a try while we're finishing up this free trial period. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.